In the 17th century, the Massachusetts colony was seized with hysteria over witchcraft and the supposed presence of Satan within the colony. At the time, Danvers was known as Salem Village and there lived Rebecca Nurse, her husband Francis Nurse, and their eight children. The land surrounding the Nurse House was originally a portion of a 300-acre grant given to Townsend Bishop in 1636. In 1678, the owner, James Allen, began renting the property to Francis Nurse, who purchased the land at the end of 20 years successfully. The first period house traditionally dates from this time when the Nurse family moved to the property. The Nurse family was a respected family around the Salem village. They frequently attended church and Francis Nurse occasionally was asked to be a judge to help settle problems around the village. Although they were a valued family, they were notorious for land disputes with the Putnam family. While these land disputes were going on, witchcraft started to become more popular around the area. Stories about girls falling into horrid fits began to circulate. When parents tried to figure out the cause, the doctor said the girls were being afflicted by witchcraft. They forcefully had to name the names of the witches and they replied with the names of Tichuba, Sarah Good, and Sarah Osborne. These three were arrested and later on many more became accused and arrested. So in 1692, it was not a surprise when the Putnams accused 70-year-old Rebecca Nurse of being involved with witchcraft and afflicting these girls. A warrant was issued for her arrest on March 23, 1692. People were hesitant to accept the idea that Rebecca was tormenting the girls with witchcraft. She was one of the oldest accused and it was an odd accusation, especially since she has a spotless reputation. There was much public outcry and the community rallied behind her protestation of innocence. A petition was made to help her and 39 of the most important community members signed it. Others made private petitions that provided evidence that denied her practicing witchcraft. She was described as, quote, not only innocent of any crime, but a very model of Christian piety. Despite this, her trial was still held on June 30, 1692. Anne Putnam still stuck to her accusation claiming Rebecca Nurse has brought Satan to tempt the young girls to sign the Devil's Book and provoke God's vengeance. Many others joined in blaming Nurse for ultimately deaths and convulsive fits. Nurse was not allowed a lawyer to represent her, so the community and family members testified for her. During questioning, the lower court showed signs of doubting her guilt because of her age, character, appearance, and innocence. But each time he would begin to waver on the issue, someone else in the crowd would either accuse her or one of the afflicted girls and Ann Putnam would break into fits and claim Nurse was tormenting her. Rebecca Nurse's body was examined by a court panel of women for anything unusual that could be linked with witchcraft or Satan. The court found unusual spots they called witch markings, or marks done by the devil. Nurse claimed these were natural growths that any elder person would have, but nobody believed her. The lower court has started to side with Anne Putnam and the afflicted girls, and Nurse blurted out, quote, I have got nobody to look to but God, unquote. The jury declared Rebecca Nurse not guilty. This was announced there was a large outrage from the afflicted girls and the fearful public. If they had reconsidered a statement about Nurse, an accused woman of witchcraft named Goody Hobbs had said Rebecca is, quote, one of us. When the judge asked Rebecca about what Goody Hobbs meant, Rebecca was old and partially deaf at the time. Didn't hear the question and remained silent. The jury and judge took the silence as guilt and decided to reconsider and came back with a verdict of guilty. She was sentenced to death. Her family petitioned Governor Phipps to review her case. Phipps did so and granted Rebecca to stay of execution until it could reach a verdict. But the afflicted girls began to have new fits when they found out and the community saw these fits as conclusive proof that Rebecca Nurse was guilty. On July 3rd, Nurse was excommunicated from her church in Salem Town. Then, on July 19th, she was executed and hanged along with others that were accused. After the hanging, her body was buried near the gallows with the other accused woman. They weren't allowed to have a Christian burial because they were considered unfit. That night, the nurse family secretly went to Gallows Hill where she was buried and dug up her body so they could bring her home and have a proper burial. It is not certain where she is laid now, but many sources say she is buried in the family cemetery by the homestead. 
In the cemetery, descendants of Rebecca Nurse made an obelisk-shaped granite memorial over her grave in her honor. It reads, Christian martyr who for truth could die when all about thee owned the hideous lie, the world redeemed from superstitious sway is breathing freer for thy sakes today. The Nurse family was eventually allowed back into the church in 1699, and Anne Putnam ended up publicly apologizing to the Nurse family for accusing Rebecca knowing she was innocent. Even though wrongly accused nurse held her dignity the whole way through her trial and deserved the label, quote, the woman of self-dignity, 